<laughs> All right, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Teardown. My name is Jeff Gluck. I'm along with my coworker, Jordan Bianchi. We are motorsports writers for The Athletic. And Jordan, <laughs> I got the good race last week. Now you have gotten a good race there at Darlington <laughs> Raceway this week where you are celebrating Mother's Day. And uh, man, I'll tell you what, uh, look look for a little bit like, oh, you know, this is going to be a, a letdown of a race, but got another banger there in Darlington, South Carolina. What do you think? Darlington Jordan? delivers, man. Darlington always delivers. It's so funny. We take a, let's take people behind the curtain, shall we? The inside baseball. You know, we always talk about what we're going to write about post race and that kind of thing. And I think with like 30, 40 laps to go, I'm like, man, what, what am I going to write about here? What's a good juicy angle? Like Brad winning. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then that's good. You know? And then I was like, Oh, well, looks like, you know, Chris is going to win or maybe Tyler is going to win. It's like, okay, I guess. And here we are, and I've got no shortage of material on this end of the day. <laughs> well, yeah, and I, you know, where we start on all this is the mystery, but we might as well start with the race winner, since that has not happened uh, for three years for Mr. Brad Kozlowski. Finally breaks through, finally yes. all these storylines about, man, you know, he went to RFK Racing to be a driver owner in the prime of his career, leaves Team Penske. And I mean, truly the prime years, right? Yeah. David Smith, who he hired, has always said, you know, the driver's peak age is, is age 39, right? And Brad went there, had not won. His teammate, Chris Busher had won some races, four times, I believe, um, yeah. to Brad zero. And Brad is now a 40-year-old, and he has he has done it. He, has, he finally got that win. And the other side of that, though, is... He left a Team Penske organization, which is easily one of the top three in, in the garage consistently. And, oh, by the way, has won the last two cup championships. So conceivably, if Brad would have stayed there, you he has a very good chance of being in that conversation and, and maybe getting a second title, which is something that he's long wanted to do because he wants to build his resume. So him leaving Penske was in the moment never felt I was like what why yeah it didn't make sense and I get it you know big picture you know you set yourself up long term but in the moment it just didn't make sense and he even admitted afterwards like you know I you know I I, I left a lot on the table there I haven't won the Daytona 500 Austin Cinder won the Daytona 500 in the car that Brad was driving the year before um and so for him to do this it finally is a big thing and this doesn't feel like it's a one-off by any means this feels like it's the first of what should be many because this team this organization um, we saw it last year it, it overall is very very good well two weeks ago we were writing this team off right like they didn't seem as good as they were um last year we're like oh the rfk cars just don't seem to quite have that same speed ford overall is down you know certainly Brad Kozlowski, despite qualifying second, wasn't somebody I was looking at going into the race as being like, nah, I think he's he's going to win it. Because I was thinking, as has been the case for every non-super speedway up until today, it's going to be, hey, look, a Gibbs car, a Hendrick car, right? Um, this These are the guys that have dominated. So when you get this, it's like, okay. And yes, Busher could have won last week, but... And also good one today. And now you, you start stacking that up and with Kozlowski's good run. You say, okay, RFK Ford yeah. found some found a little something here, but <clears throat> it's sort of like until it's proven until you actually see it cross the finish line. Um, and, and not in a photo finish and take the checkered flag and all that <laughs> stuff. You're like, okay. Yeah. And I mean, now we can start, we can start having a different conversation, but up until this point, I think it's been, Hey, like, do they really, do they really have it now you're putting together, you know, they put together back to back good races here. And it's sort of a similar conversation to when RFK suddenly won, you know, three straight ovals out of nowhere, um, where you're like, wait, are these guys for real? Like what's going on here? Where did this come yeah. from? You know? So, and this is earlier in the season this time. So maybe, maybe they have found something. I mean, Ford, Ford in general today, and we'll get to that, but I mean, Josh Berry third, uh, Chase Briscoe fifth, mm -hmm. Justin Haley ninth. Yeah. You know, wow! How about that one? Uh, Michael McDowell tenth. So 
Ford had half the top 10 at an intermediate track where it's been like, Hey, you know, and also by the way, Ryan Blaney was probably going to mm-hmm. have a top five, if not better. Joey Logano was up there mm-hmm. in the top 10 before a penalty. So Todd Gilliland was up there. That's right. Yeah. If Todd Gilliland has a pit crew that doesn't cost him mega spots, seemingly every, every stop, um, he's up there as well. So yeah, I mean, all of a sudden you're like, well, wait a minute, Ford, Ford's find something. <laughs> RFK's found something. Uh, and we're halfway through the regular season, but maybe all is not lost for these teams. Apparently. No, it, it, but it never should have been though. And we've talked about that. Like this. Oh, is able- give me a break. No, no, no. What no. do you mean? Never should have been. Come on. I have told you, you, you two weeks ago or whatever, you asked me if I should panic if I'm Ford. And I said, no, you shouldn't panic because you look at the last two years. They have struggled. They have been off. We've written them off. Toyota's better. Chevrolet is better. You know, they can't run on the intermediate tracks. And what did I say? Come the playoffs. The template is out there. Like the template is they get better as the year goes on. They have found something. And that is true. They did it two years ago with Logano. They did it last year with Blaney. And so, no, I mean, it's it, it wasn't time to like panic. The sky isn't falling. Um, is it concerning? Yeah, it's concerning. You don't want to go this deep into a year without a win. But like at the end of the day, the confidence is there. Like they've been down this road. This isn't anything new. Um, I, I think this is a, a sign for me that this is more than just the Penske's. Uh, are finding something this is rfk you're really kind of emerging and i know they had moments last year late in the year you know, late in the regular season but this early in the year them qualifying well them racing well um that that is a team that's been overlooked a lot um, i know i've done that and it feels like maybe we should be doing that anymore all right let the record show that jordan bianchi claims that he was never worried Never a doubt. I never a doubt. Said Ford on this was show, gonna... I literally, you, I, for, I will go back and find it. I, you literally asked me, and I'm like, no, it's not. Here's why. And I think you. I remember with you. Me. We laid out the path that, yes, all you have to do is get hot in the playoffs, and there's, you know, yes, Blaney won the Coke 600, and then blah blah. blah. But I don't recall any conversation about like, oh, they're going to be just fine. They shouldn't worry at all. Oh they they'll they'll catch Toyota and 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 Hendrick. I I certainly never thought that. You could. That's fine. Listen. I don't want to argue with you. If you want to claim that you thought that, congratulations, good to you. I will just own it and say, I certainly never thought that. <laughs> so I you're certainly like thought, you're owning it. You made a mistake. You're owning it. I don't think it was a mistake. I think it was like Ford has come out with this new car and they seem really behind. They seem to be in quite a bit of trouble. Um, you had Joey Logano on the morning drive during his weekly appearance this week saying, I mean, the window that they have to get it in is so tiny for them to get it right, to hit on something, to, to have a good day. Um, I mean that they, they, you know, Ford is, is not in the best place. So again, no, I, I did not think, uh, that Ford was going to come out here today. And I know Harvick said, Hey, like, you know, they've made some improvements, to their engines and stuff like that. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's great. The word in the garage. That's great. Okay. Wonderful. But I still, until, until you see it, I'm very skeptical about this because it's been week after week after week of the same thing. So no, I'm not going to be like, I, I knew they'd come around. I knew they'd make the gains. No, I mean, in fact, drivers have been saying, Hey, look, kind of what you have is what you have with this, with this car in a lot of ways. So it's That's not true. Drivers haven't been saying that. I'm not saying that drivers haven't been saying that, but them saying it doesn't make it true. Like they're they're That's proven. Uh, okay i mean this is only the third year of the car the first year you okay. can't count and, it and all the first two years penske won the championship and nobody at this time of the year if you go back the last two years nobody thought the penske's had a chance at all to win a championship and yet they did i i, I can't the, the first year you can't count at all the first year was wide open last year you know i don't think we really knew yet this year it seemed to we be a completely know. different we trend talking about ryan blaney as a championship contender last year <sighs> All right, I'm oh, I'm God. very happy for you. No, I'm very I'm legitimately happy for you that you <laughs> have have kept an open mind and you came to this conclusion and um you you knew you knew that things oh, go in cycles oh, and you yeah. you knew that Hendrick and Gibbs weren't just going to stay on top of your all year long. You had it. I'm happy for you. I'm I'm mm-hmm. I'll concede the point. I'm sure you thought that. That's that's great. I'm okay. not, that's, I'm not being time. sarcastic. I'm it's great. Mm-hmm. What what what? I'm I'm Nothing. giving I'm it's great. okay. 
I'm, I didn't think that. I'm, all I'm saying is I didn't think that. So I will take it on myself. And everybody can say Jeff Gluck was the idiot. Jordan Bianchi was the genius. Okay, that's fine. I'm used to being the idiot. So I'm used to being the genius. It's cool. There you go. Um, so, yes, that was a big win for Ford. Uh, they were been beaten down pretty badly, especially yeah. after last week. Um, man, it was right there within their grasp at Kansas, and it, it didn't work out. It was right there within their grasp at Atlanta, and it didn't work out. Um, but now they've now they've come around. So, um, yes, uh, that that, that storyline you can get that, rid of that one. Uh, you can get rid of the RFK thing. I mean, they they've they're on the board now. They're running competitively. If Keselowski wasn't going to win, perhaps Busher was going to win. But that gets us to poor. Poor, poor Chris Ooh. Busher. Here's two weeks that, you know, you, you think, boy, it sure would be cool to be a race car driver. Sure would be cool to, hey, yeah, closest finish ever in history. Yeah, you didn't win, but you're still part of that. That's a cool moment. Finish second. That's pretty cool. Getting paid the big bucks driving race cars. Um, and then you're going to win potentially this one, Darlington, Mother's Day, pretty badass. Hey, you're, you're competitive. You're good. You're at the top level. But honestly, I don't think I'd trade. I don't think I'd trade these last couple of weeks because the guy has just been through the ringer. I don't know. Would you, would you want to be Chris Busher even with all yeah. the, at, all, at the end of the day? Absolutely. Why would you not? Cause you well, lose. I mean, I mean, that's part of professional sports. When you go into professional sports, you know, you're, you're going to lose more than you win. That's just the way it is. Well, as someone who doesn't like to admit that they're wrong about anything, I mean, I think it would be very tough for you, first of all, at Kansas, where you had it in the bag, right? And everybody's dissecting your move at Kansas saying, well, you let, I mean, hey, you, you gave Larson the outside here. You, and, 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 you know, if you didn't do that, then you should have put him in the wall. And you should have, you know, because he, he ended up roughing you up, you should have roughed him up. So everybody all week on Chris Busher. Man, you should have done this. You should have done this. And he has that in his own head. I could, he says, I could have done 100 things differently. But what does he do? He goes on Dale Jr. Download Reloaded, right? He does a guest appearance, right? Like he, he does the interviews. He goes on the pre-race show for Fox. He does the interviews, right? He comes in the media center. He was on stage, right? He does one of the on stage things he agreed yeah. to. Uh, did he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Yeah. So he, he's like, I'm not, you know, he's not ducking. He's not like, I'm going to go in the scrum and, and just do that and try to do my quick five minutes and get out. I'm going to go on stage. So all week, how does it feel to be that guy, right? Then you have it right here. It's, uh, it's unfolded for you brilliantly. Reddick and Keselowski, great battle, but they're getting together and you swoop three wide. Not as cool as the five wide from last week, but pretty cool this is pretty cool though i mean at darlington yeah. going into turn one like that that this yeah. is i mean here and it, there's the lead it's open reopened again and yes it's not over because you got to race reddick for it but you're assuming that reddick is gonna race you clean you're gonna give somebody room as as busher just did to larson last week that he's gonna race somebody hard but clean right so all of a sudden you know yes he he does hit the wall there and as part of a battle, but hitting the wall at Darlington is not the end of things. But right after he hits the wall there, he gets cleaned out. And everything, the, the, the redemption storyline, the, this, I'm going to turn this around. Oh my gosh. It's all out the window again. And now he finishes 30th and he actually loses a spot in the point standings, drops one spot to 12. And he's on the, he's clearly in a bubble in the danger zone too, by the way. Yes, he is. We are halfway through the regular season. He is p plus fifteen points to the bubble. I mean, the difference between thirtieth and second. Oh, that's a big. I mean, that's between the bubble and almost not at this point, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, I mean, that's why I wouldn't want to be. I mean, that's a that's a lot mentally. Really, really tough. And by the way, that is exactly why. I don't fault his reaction. Oh no, not whatsoever. Um, How could but you? I also don't fault Tyler Reddick's move, which I know we'll get into, and I also don't fault Tyler Reddick's reaction. So 
you were right there. I'm messaging you after as we do sometimes because I'm not sure if you're aware of what's going <laughs> yeah, yeah. on. We always kind of, we're good teammates. We always communicate. So I'm like, oh, just to let you know, this is going on on TV right now, and this is what they said. And you're like, yeah, I just got the entire thing. So yeah. what did you see? What did you hear from the red so exposure was, thing? Yeah, so you know, Chris is on pit road, and you see him get out of his car. Then coincidentally, just by happenstance, Reddick comes down pit road and parks his car right behind Chris. Like, it's just the way it worked out. And you're like, oh, okay. Because sometimes they're far apart. And if they're far apart, that will be a natural diffuser where, you know, unless the guy's really fired up, he's not going to storm down pit road. We've seen it happen, but a lot of times by then it, 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 it subsides. And you're like, oh, this is going to be interesting. And I was talking to somebody and then all of a sudden you see like this mob of people like run over. And then apparently in the middle of that was Chris and he was confronting Reddick. And then I shoved my way in there into the front and they you had shoved your way into something. That's kind of surprising. Yeah, I know. I'm shocked. I know. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, yeah. So move people out of my way and got in the front and I mean, he's right. Like, I mean, in Reddick has a win. He's in the playoffs. He is in the playoffs. Chris, does not have a win. He knows his point situation. We just went over it. He's very much on the bubble. You have no guarantees you're going to win one of these remaining 13 races. And your season, you know, we don't know. He's frustrated. And he's not somebody that's easily angry. He's not been in one of these confrontations before. He's not somebody like that. He's very mild-mannered. And so his reaction was very much understandable. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, would you like to go over what was said. I, I have the transcript. Yes. I sent it to you. I don't know if you can see it right like, there. Do, uh, yeah. Like, do you want to be take... Busher or Reddick? Uh, you decide. You, you go first. You be Busher. Oh, okay. I'll be <laughs> And I'll be, and I, I will try not, I will not swear. Yeah, that's I will, probably good. Yeah. Because there's, yeah, there's, there's kids clean, listening to this. So, um, All right. okay. So I've sent you the transcript there. Do you see All it? Right. We're like, we'd like to do like a scene here. Like, you know, Hey, you know, yes. The right. scene is pit road after the race at Darlington after, <laughs> I you just should put complete. like a helmet on too, by the way, just to really kind of, you know, go for it here. Okay. Well, uh, go ahead. Be method. Be method acting. All right. Ready? Okay. Yeah. And there we go. What was that? What was that? I, I know. I, I effed up. I'm, I'm sorry. No. Sh I thought we weren't going to swear. Jeez. Well, I, you can't, I mean, like, I'm sorry. I'm in the moment here. I'm, I'm a method actor. I'm passionate. Now we have to, now I have to bleep this in the podcast. Oh. Good boy. You know how hard it is to bleep. I'm not good at the bleep. I'm Ugh. sorry. I asked. Jeez. Up. Okay. See what I did there? Yes, I get that. All right. <clears throat> hey, Chris. I, I'm. I'm really. We have raced each other clean. What was that about? It. As soon as I knew that wasn't going to work, I tried to back out, and I got. The, the last thing I wanted to do was wreck your car. I. I can care less about mine. I'm. I'm sorry. I effed up. I effed up doesn't work for me we don't have that sticker that's on our door right now you need to be better uh, how, what i i <laughs> have my earbuds i don't have that sticker on my door this means more i need you to be better we race each other just fine for so long i know i'm sorry and so okay what did you what did you think of that exchange on both on both ends I, I thought they I thought Chris did a really good job of showing his anger and frustration justifiably so but he didn't like he didn't get physical I mean he didn't go over there and start throwing punches like that he he expressed his frustration and I thought he I thought, I thought he ended like a professional I really truly did like you you're upset and you're angry and you're making it known but you're not going over there and throwing haymakers and you know doing all of that it's like a you let him know. I thought he handled it like a professional. And I thought Reddick did too. Like Reddick owned it. Like he said, I screwed up. Like he didn't try to make excuses of like, hey, oh, you know, uh, I could have not. Like, yeah. No, it was like, I screwed up, dude. My fault. Sorry. Like, I, and, and I do think him saying that right away, like, hey, I'm sorry. Like, I, it, it just, it, in Chris, it did something. I want to talk about Reddick's reaction a little bit more. First of all, I, that took me back to the moment where Reddick got taken out by Chase Briscoe at the Bristol Dirt Race. Reddick and Briscoe then talk and have a very cordial exchange afterwards. And Briscoe, you know, is basically saying, hey, I screwed up, right? Like, and Reddick took it well. He was smiling. Reddick, I believe, actually, at the time, got sort of criticized for, why are you smiling, man? You just got yeah. wrecked. You should have been pissed at him or whatever. 
but he took it as okay there's hard racing going for it you know i yeah. mean he wasn't happy but you know it's like all right i i get it right in this situation i mean i again i preface early i don't fault reddick i mean i don't think that i i truly don't think he was trying to do anything on purpose no. or put him in the wall so would it be a different thing if like, Hey, he tried to rough him up to do that and he wrecked his car. Of course I'd be a, you know, that's, that's just uncalled for. Why was he doing that kind of thing? Right. But this is, he, he miscalculated. Okay. Like th we, we all know how hard it is to pass at these tracks. And when you're this, this was, they were viewing this as the battle for the win. He was going for the win. They are absolutely on the edge in these cars and he overstepped slightly. He miscalculated. Okay. Like, he, and he, you know, he didn't do it on purpose. Okay. So I, I really don't, I'm not going to sit here and be like, man, this professional race car, I would have done this, that professional race car driver really screwed up there. And boy, what a, what a bonehead he is. I, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. I think these, these cars are really hard to drive. They are going all out. They're absolutely, again, completely on the edge. So sorry, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, throw stones at Reddick for something that was clearly unintentional. But I also think too, as you alluded to earlier, Reddick's reaction, he, you know, a lot of people in that situation would have been like, Hey man, I I'm going for the win. I'm going for mm -hmm. the win, buddy. Sorry. Like I got to do Deal what I got to do. Sorry. Or whatever. It. Yeah. Yeah. Or like, or you, you hit the wall first. I mean, you hit mm -hmm. the wall too. Like yeah. or made oh, some Arrow excuse. Got me into you or whatever. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just got sucked right up, up in you. Mm -hmm. He said, like, Hey, I messed up. I messed up. As soon as I knew it wasn't going to work, I tried to back out and I, I last, that was the last thing I wanted to do. He felt truly remorseful for it. And I know, I don't doubt you got to see his Fox interview. Um, but I mean, there was almost, he almost looked tearful. I mean, he looked truly sorry. Right. So I take him at his word. I think there's the facts are not in dispute here. He messed up and it happens. Okay. Like this is what we want. These guys are absolutely going for it. So that's why you looked skeptical about me saying, I'm not going to point fingers. I'm just, what's, what's your, you know, what no, do you want to say? I, yes. I, I agree with everything you said. I mean, I, I mean, hundred percent, I agree with you hundred percent. The only thing I would ever question in all of this is, is if Reddick maybe should have used a little bit more patience there. Um, and he was obviously running faster times than Chris. Like, do you need to do a slide job there? Is that really, do you really have to go? Is that the opportunity where you have to go all in? I, I don't know. Um, it didn't feel like it at that moment. It felt like you could have you could have worked him over, or you would have had better opportunity. But I agree with everything you said there. I mean, I just think it's, yeah. I think these guys, especially We're like like, yeah. like Reddick and Keselowski on that restart, right when Reddick gets the um, he gets the narrow narrow advantage from having that first pit stall, and they they are going for it with thirty whatever laps to go. Right. And, and that they're viewing like that as, as the battle for the win. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, like that is, they're like, whoever gets clean air and track position here, it, this is it. Agreed. It's done. Yeah, I get it. So I think based just, on how these races unfold, that seems very fairly accurate. Like yeah, you're, you're not going to get I, back, back by somebody. So, yeah, you're right. I just, part of me again, just wonders with the looking at the number of laps left. It's like, you could just, is it, is it better just to be patient there? But to your point, you, you can't be, I mean, like you, we have seen these races where clean air is everything and the guy in front has the advantage and defensive driving and all of the stuff. So I guess if you do have that opportunity, you, you better go for it. What do you think about Busher's sort of assertion? And that, and again, this was completely heat of the moment. So I don't know that I want to pin this on Busher as his true genuine thoughts or like, represent this as how he is genuinely feeling, um, going forward. I mean, I think the sentiment is there, but when he says you, you, I don't have that sticker that you have. So he's basically saying to me, he's like, you, you gotta, you gotta realize the position I'm in, man. You can't, you can't take me out of a, of a race like that because you have the win. I don't have a win. Do you think that somebody with the win should race somebody who doesn't have a win any differently what is the no, protocol there because wins matter because wins matter bonus points matter all of these things we have seen it happen so many times in the playoffs where a driver's success in the regular season and all of the bonus points they accrue have been the difference between advancing and elimination so no like 
you, uh, I have no problem with it. I mean, that you, you can't take that into account. You are out for your own interests. You have to be selfish. You have to look out for your own needs. I, I have no problem with that in that situation because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to go out there and win. If it's a teammate, the conversation could be had. But a guy from a different team, absolutely not. Yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? Because in some ways you would like to say, hey, look, you've got to win and I know you're going for it, but just just take care of me a little bit, man. Like, don't freaking wreck my car. And, you know, that's that's part of the point as well, right? Like, even if you're, even if it's for the win, okay, you're, you're, you're you know, you're making an aggressive move, don't, don't wreck me. But again, I don't think he meant to. Yeah, you know, it wasn't all. like he intentionally so, put a bumper to him and tried to wreck him. It was like he just made a mistake and a in he compromised Chris and that was the unfortunate reality. It wasn't like he went in there and slammed into him. That's a whole different conversation. I will say, and you may maybe disagree with this, I have more of a problem with like the Logano Byron thing from a couple years ago at Darlington to settle the win um for this spring race than I do for for this one. Like when, when Logano just went there and shoved Byron up out of the way for the retaliation of getting him into him on a restart a little bit. I thought that was, that was excessive. Um, I, I didn't like that, but this again, being again, going for the win, incidental contact, not intentional. Yeah. That's, that's where I, that's where I come down on it. So it's much different. I mean, the one you, the reference with Logano Byron was a hundred percent deliberate. He acknowledged it was deliberate. He went in there with intent. The intent here wasn't to, to put Chris in the wall. The intent was to do a slide job and pull away for him. He just did fail. I have a question for you, Jeff. Mm -hmm. If you're in an altercation and you're a driver, you're leaving your helmet on or are you taking it off? Well, okay. So in this, in this situation, I know that people are going to go, Oh, Reddick stand there talking with his helmet on. It seemed to me like, so Reddick had gotten, just gotten out of the car. Yeah. Busher comes down flying yeah. toward him. He was there quick. He didn't even have a chance. And, and by the way, by the end of it, Reddick yeah. does take his helmet off and does take his, you know, yeah. is saying, I mean, it's almost like, hey, look, I am giving you a shot. If, if you wanted it, yeah. it is here. But, you, but I don't even think he had time to. Are you leaving your helmet on or are you taking it off? Who is the driver? You, oh, Bob? Oh, so Oh, what? man. I mean, who uh, is it? Let's say Bob. Bob confronts you. He's upset. I've seen Bob very, 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 very oh, bad. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very bad. Bob's scary bad. But... I don't think he would actually like punch me in the face. I think he would just like get really mad. So I think I'd be fine taking my helmet off for, for like a Bob situation. If it's, okay. if it's some, I mean, you know, cause I, and I, I brought up media people cause I'm just saying people what, that I know or have a relationship with. Right. Because clearly yeah. these two know each other. They've been around each other. They've worked in the same spaces, competed against each other. Right. So, um, I don't really think, think i would take it off because yeah w would you yeah i would i would take my glass i have it off i just you know i want to fix the hair first though before i'm in any confrontation but yeah. oh okay i want to okay. i mean yeah i want to be on national tv with all these confrontations i want to look my best what about well i mean poor brad you know he had the eye black dripping i don't know yeah. if you saw that you know somebody, somebody just wiped these people's faces Ross Chastain with the watermelon seed. <laughs> this, I mean, you know, the, the eye black smeared. Yeah. Reddick had a little thing going up in the back too. He didn't have his yeah. perfect, but I know you would have. I know you would have. Yeah. No, like, I mean, I'd be like Alan, Alan Quicker, they used to say he used to have a comb in his car and he would always comb his hair before he'd get out. I, I respect mean, that. As long as somebody's not charging toward you, some big <laughs> dude from Texas who wants hey, hey, to. Before you punch me, let me fix my hair. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Dude, just hold, on, hold on, buddy. Hold on. Let me, <laughs> not the hair. Not like the from, hair. from Don't Anchorman. The hair. Yeah. <laughs> Anchorman. Yep. Well, I will say though, I mean, speaking of Reddick, obviously all people are going to talk to talk about regarding Reddick from this race is, um, you know, the, the incident at the end there. But I mean, the dude in some ways had maybe his best career race. Um, I mean, he led 174 laps career high his best previous was 99 laps and that was at the bristol dirt race so um it's a lot easier to lead laps on small little bristol than 174 laps at darlington um so you know 
that's they they had good speed as well. I mean, and, and mm-hmm. I mean, would you say he had the fastest car? I mean, he started on the pole, left the most laps. Yeah, I would. I think he had the fastest car, um, and I think it was a great all around day for him and that organization. Bubba had a great finish today too. Really needed that after a tough Kansas, where expectations were really high going in there, and they fell flat in their face. So this was a very nice rebound for him and the organization as a whole. So it was good to see. Um, I don't know if it was the best race I've ever seen. I mean, I still remember him at Road America running down Chase Elliott. To me, that just jumps out to me. Um, but really just a great drive today, though. And he's a tremendous talent. Like, he is really a driver who can win every just about everywhere. We've, we've talked about this. He is a an A+. Plus, he's an A, you know, five, what do they call it, five-tool player. Um, and that's what he is. Like, he, he is a five-tool driver. And he just needs more consistency. And these moments where he's got speed and things happen at the end seems that he, he it doesn't happen as much they still pop up occasionally um you'd like to see him really string together a bunch of races in a row where you're going out leading laps finishing in the top five that's the one thing right now but overall it, it's really hard to be critical of him and his performance yeah it makes me feel a little bit better about picking him for the final four sure. this year because again with the some of the woes the struggles they had earlier in the season. You're like, ah, I don't know if I, if I want to do that, but um, sticking with my pick. So it's looking good there. You know, there was a couple other highlight performances uh, this week that, you know, I, I'm not sure, you know, what I, maybe, maybe people would have bet on Keselowski, um, but would somebody have picked, you know, a Josh Berry top 10 or a Justin Haley top 10, um, you know, that that's where I'm. I would have liked to. I, I would have liked to go back and look at the odds for that because, mm-hmm. um, obviously, right now betting is a big thing, and FanDuel, America's number one sports book, uh, again, like it, let let's say I I don't know what they were, but if you had just thrown a couple bucks on a Justin Haley top ten, uh, when Rick Ware Racing had never had a top ten in its history uh, on anything but a super speedway. Uh, I'm sure that would have paid out just about as well as Keselowski winning the race. But, um, if you want to try it yourself right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you bet your first five bucks, all you have to do is go to fanduel.com slash tear down to sign up. And then you can bet on everything from individual race winners to prop bets to which driver is going to take home the championship. Is it Reddick? I don't know. Maybe probably pretty good odds for that as well. And that's all on an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So start your engines with $200 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you place your first $5 bet. Again, all you have to do is go to fanduel.com slash teardown to get started. FanDuel is an authorized gaming operator of NASCAR. However, you must be 21 and older and present in North Carolina. Your first online real money wager only. A $10 deposit is required. The bonus is issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at fanduel.com slash sportsbook. If you have a gambling problem, make sure to call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. Was that a smooth uh, smooth ad read? That was a smooth read, smooth transition. That was was aces, man. All right. But well seriously though, like I, I really do think the Justin Haley storyline uh is is we we really should not Kaz Grahl had a top twenty two, by the way, his teammate. Yeah, that's hey, that's right. Eighteenth I see for Kaz Grala. Um look, you can say, Oh, Justin Haley, yeah, he he overachieves or whatever, right? But when and, and I think Rick Ware, look, it, they've they've definitely improved, right? Like they are they are better. But when a team has never gotten a top 10 uh, in its history at anything but a super speedway. And you just go and casually run P nine at Darlington, Mm -hmm. the most difficult oval, according to a survey that I did uh, this week that was on the athletic. Um, I mean, that's hey, pretty impressive. And, and in addition, I mean the Josh Berry P three, quite a, quite a move there. I mean, this guy, um, we, we've sort of, uh, and overlooking him in the rookie of the year battle because I believe he had been, I think he had been, let's see. So Carson Hosevar coming in today was 22nd points. And uh, mm-hmm. yeah, so Hosevar was, was ahead 23rd. of, yeah, yeah Hosevar was, was ahead 23rd. of Barry. 
coming into today. Now Barry moved up to 21st in points. Josefar dropped to 25th. So suddenly Josh Barry is right where many people predicted him in terms of the rookie of the year battle. Um, and, you know, again, like Stuart Haas, the expectations that we had, whether you want to say Ford had, hey, you know, some different engine stuff or whatever this week, great. That's but buzz. They say no, but by the way. Officially, they say no. Doug Yates, I talked to Doug Yates in Victory Lane, and he was like, we know, we, we're, we've got new stuff coming. But there's new, new stuff. There's no new stuff this weekend. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, I thought I heard Harvick say. But Harvick that, did, and people think, and and again, I, just because somebody says no, you know, we you know how this works. Just because someone denies something or whatever doesn't always make you know. So who knows? I don't know. I you mean, Doug know. Gates is no, no, no. I'm not. I mean, maybe they, they, they want to tip their hand though. Is what I'm saying. You know. Well, if he's saying they have new stuff coming, but it wasn't this week. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Well, so, okay, well, I, I don't even know why then. But it's, you know, again, interesting that Stuart Haas gets a couple top fives out of Darlington. Um, yeah. You know, very, uh, I, I think it's worth shouting that stuff out. A couple quick notes here on mm-hmm. Barry and Haley. Both those drivers are really good drivers at saving their equipment. Haley's gotten good runs before on tracks like this. Um, Barry, you go back to Bristol. We know about Bristol and the tire wear, right, and how excessive that was. He led 25 laps at Bristol that day, was among the contenders, slid back and finished 12. Richmond, another track, especially early on, there was tire wear. Guys had to manage their stuff a little bit, had a really good day, finished 11th. You look at his finishes over the last four weeks, 16th at Dega, 14th at Dover, 15th at Kansas, 3rd at Darlington. This is a driver who's getting experience and getting better, taking advantage of his equipment. And Rodney Childers is a terrific crew chief. He's one of the best in the garage, and he's going to build his drivers and put his drivers in position to be successful. This is a team that's really starting to get better and better, and it's impressive to see what they're doing. Well, we talked about the good. There was also some bad for some very notable drivers Ooh, today. Off day for a lot of guys. Um, Ryan Blaney, as we mentioned earlier, was going to have a great day. Uh, William Byron. Um, you know, kind of just makes it three wide there with Truex in the middle. Uh, Byron, I watched Bob's interview that he posted on X afterward. And Byron, as he said on his radio, was sort of like, I don't really know what happened. I mean, I kind of thought I had position. Kind of thought my car was down there and, and you know, it just didn't work out. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it did seem like he, that was a pretty aggressive move for early in the race. Um, it didn't seem like he left Truex a lot of room and, uh, Truex obviously then ends up, you know, getting Blaney as well. Blaney wrecks out, finishes last. Um, so what, what did you make of that, that whole thing? Yeah. Or if you yeah, have I any... echo what you said, it was an aggressive move, but again, restart, right? This was a restart. We know drivers are very aggressive on restarts. They feel like this is the opportunity to gobble up positions. It's hard to pass, et cetera, et cetera. So I get where Byron is coming from, but you also got to be aware of your surroundings. And he did say in the thing, he did not mean to take anybody out. He wasn't trying to put anybody in a bad spot, but that's the reality. And darling, it gets real narrow off a of turn two real quick. And, you know, there's not much Blaney could have done there. I, I get Blaney's frustration, 100%. I, I get it. Like, there's nothing you can do. Like, if you back out, you get ran over. You can't move up because you're up against the wall already. So you, you've kind of got to put your faith in that the guys around you are going to race you you know, we're not going to put you in a bad spot. Fortunately for him, he got in a bad spot and you know, I, I get it. Well, uh, true X was another, uh, person on the wrong end of that one. Um, ends up finishing 25th, probably would have had a top five car. Oh yeah. I mean, he was, this is maybe this a winning is car. Taylor made for him. He's so yeah. good here. And he's, you know, he's only got two wins here and you look at it. And it's like, man, like last year's race, great car. This year's race, really good car. He's had, a lot of really fast race cars here. 2020 wrecks with Chase Elliott as he's leading, you know, the Southern 500. Man, this is such a good rack for, I, I he was my pick to win this race. I really thought he was going to win and it didn't happen. I mean, there's a lot of people, I mean, again, you go down through this. And Kyle Larson. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Larson's the next one we're going to talk about. Um, he could have won this race. And, and that's when you're going, that's what makes this so hard, right? Like in terms of, you know, the sports betting element we were talking about before. I mean, Truex would have been a great pick. Reddick would have been a great pick. Busher, if you picked him, you're looking good. Larson, 
Blaney, whatever. And, and stuff happens and it's just, yeah. But as a consequence of, of both Larson and Truex having bad days, Larson ends up as the NASCAR cup series points leader at the halfway point of the regular season. Uh, he is up by 30 on Truex up 39 on Hamlin up 49 on Byron or sorry, Elliot, not Byron. Um, and this adds to the storyline now of what's coming for the rest of this month, because now it's not just Kyle Larson, you know, former cup champion is going to do the double. He's going to be in the Indy 500. It's current NASCAR cup series points leader. Kyle Larson is doing the Indy 500, which I just think adds just another little yep. layer to what we're about to see qualifying for the Indy 500 next week. Um, in addition to the all-star race, Larson's going to be doing both. Um, so that's a, a little bit of a mini double in some ways, at least going back and forth. Um, Indy 500 practice, I believe starts Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, He's racing a dirt car on Monday. And, uh, I will be getting to Indy, Indy myself on Thursday, just in time for uh, fast Friday when they turn up the boost. So, uh, lots come there. And, um, but yeah, I think it's, I think it's, uh, this Larson element coming up these next couple of weeks are going to be so fun to follow. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's the month of Larson. It really feels like, honestly, I mean, this is, we, we, it feels like we've always talked about the, the, what if, what if Kyle Larson ran the Daytona or the Indy 500, if, you know, and that kind of thing, whatever happened, it didn't feel like it would happen. And then it's actually happening. And it, it's really cool to see a driver of his ability step out of his comfort zone and, and put himself out there to do this. Um, it, it's, it, he deserves all the kudos in the world for, for, for being willing to do this because you can easily embarrass yourself. It's really easy to do that. And it's, this is his month and it's going to be interesting to see how this unfolds, but this just the fact that he's doing it, um, it deserves a, a praise. Pretty crazy that you're like, man, I've got like this huge couple weeks coming up and I'm going to start that by flying to Paris to a Taylor <laughs> Swift concert in the middle of the week, flying back. And then instead of like taking any sort of time off, I got to get to Indy right away so I can yeah. race my, race my sprint car, <laughs> you know, but that's Kyle Larson, right? Like, he yeah, just, that's Kyle Larson. Like, yeah, he just He's keeps going. It. Doesn't. Yeah. 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 I mean, I wouldn't want to fly to Paris to go see Taylor Swift, but to each their own. Yeah. We, we know that Jordan, we're, we're yeah. well aware that I, I don't know how you of all people, so how you of all people end up asking a Taylor Swift question in the press conference after your two weeks ago, you're like, I don't know who this person is. Then you go to F1 yeah. and you're like a changed man. And you like no, now I'm not a changed man. I got I my, got, our coworkers sent me videos yeah, of you torture. listening to Taylor Swift in yeah, the Randy, car Randy. on the way. Yeah. I've seen the videos. It's a form of terrorism, Jeff, that I had to be subjected to that. Um, so how it came about on uh, Saturday was, the, just the way the questions fell, someone asked him about Taylor Swift before me, and it like, and he answered it, and he said he had a good time, et cetera, et cetera. But he's he's kind of saying he was a great time. She puts, you know, she's, she was entertaining, blah blah. blah. And I was like, it just felt like it was sitting there. And the journalist, the hard hitting, you know, journalist that I am, I asked the tough questions that everyone else was afraid to ask. Someone had to ask, "Are you a Swifty?" So I did. Yeah. Well, that's. Thank you for the public service that you did there with the great journalism. You know what? It's uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Can you buy me a drink for that? Oh, okay. Well, listen, everybody, there is good news about Jordan Bianchi's journalism. Oh, and uh, this is a compliment, Jordan. So brace yourself. When it comes to things like silly season or the schedule or just news in general, if you're not paying attention to what Jordan Bianchi is doing, at the athletic, um, you're missing the boat. And this week, Jordan wrote a story, 2025 NASCAR cup series schedule. What we're hearing about Mexico city, LA and more. You did not break the schedule, uh, at this time yet. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if you're going to, but, um, you pretty much laid out what <laughs> you believe is going to happen when the schedule does come out, um, there's some interesting nuggets. You, I don't know. You want to go through yeah, well, some, some of your notable ones? or, why, or don't just, I, why don't I lay them out, and then I want to get your reaction. Okay. I think that would be probably 
more entertaining for our listeners, to be honest with you. So we'll just let's kind of run down the start here. Um, number one on the list, it appears likely that NASCAR is going to race internationally at the Cup Series points race for the first time since the 1950s. Mexico City looks like that's where they're going. So, Jeff, Mexico City on the Cup Series schedule next year. Yeah, I mean, I... It sounds like this could come at the expense of Richmond. We're getting there. Uh, we're you, getting there. We're getting okay. there. Yeah. Well, that's it's sort of tied into it, right? Because yeah. how do I feel really about? I mean, if you're just talking about Mexico City in a bubble, um, I did go to the final um, Bush Series race there, the Xfinity Series race, um, and you know the track has changed since then. But I, I liked it. I liked Mexico City. Um, I thought. Everything was fine. NASCAR at the time was like really, really well organized. And, um, you know, you didn't, the teams didn't have to worry about anything, right? Like everybody, including drivers would stay at one of like, you know, three approved hotels or something. And then everybody again, including drivers, I remember Carl Edwards being on the same bus as us, the media, right? Like you know, there's just buses going back and forth from the track. So it, buses going back and forth from the airport, everybody just sort of goes, together. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, and you know, they, they know how to do this stuff. They put a lot of planning into it. And, you know, I'm, I think that the fans will be absolutely bonkers for Suarez being there. And that would be tremendous, right? Like the, the atmosphere will be great. Um, and you know, a, a points race, I mean, there, there'll be some stakes. So, but again, like road course racing, it, you know, it's, it hasn't been great now. Short track racing also hasn't been great. So yeah. I just don't know about, I mean, I'm not going to be like, Oh, you shouldn't drop Richmond. Cause we've all, we've all talked about Richmond, but yeah, I mean, it's just tough to be like, Oh, I can't wait for another road course race at this point. But I just think the event is what's going to matter, right? Not the racing, just so, like with Chicago, just Chicago actually turns to be good, but we were all about, Hey, it's the event that matters. So mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you, what, what's your take? I think it's long overdue. I'm glad to see it. I mean, yes, you can, you can talk about the road racing aspect and how the quality is it maybe where we want it, but this is going to be a event. It's going to be a very big deal. Um, I think it's, it's a win, but let's get to the next thing. And you mentioned it, and this is part of it. If Mexico city comes onto the schedule, sources have indicated to me that Richmond, the spring Richmond date is going to be the one drop from the schedule. Your thoughts on that? Yeah. Again, I mean, it's, this is what you, I mean, you could sort of see it coming, right? Yeah. I mean, this has been just, a long, this is not, I mean, I will say this a year ago, this was very close to happening. It's just, it's, it's very tough to make a case for Richmond to have two races at this point. So there's really nothing. It's well, I mean, what can you say? It sucks. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the, the, the fan support and the racing are both not great. So what do you do? No, you I know? agree. The only thing you can hope for is you figure out the short track package and, and it's, I will just say this too. This isn't a short track package thing. Like it's this, Richmond's problems go longer than that. And like, yeah, we, I mean, it's it's to the last car too. Yeah, so. exactly. So like, I mean, so there's there's more issues here, but you hope that whatever issues they've had, they get figured out, and then maybe they put on a great shows. And NASCAR has shown that if you you know you can go back to a track again, they'll they'll re add it. So that's we'll see what happens there. Uh, let's see, Clash. A lot of talk about what's going to happen with the Clash. It's not going back to the LA Coliseum. That three-year experiment is over. Sources indicate the athletic Bowman Gray Stadium is the likely site of the 2025 clash. Well, I mean, okay, here's here's the thing about this. Look, I've, you know, Bowman Gray versus the Coliseum. I don't know. I mean, I don't don't like that it's not in a big market. if you're going to do that, because I think you go back to when the clash started at the LA Coliseum and you're like, wow, they have really discovered something here. They can now go to any big city that NASCAR is not racing in and create a purpose built track inside a stadium. Wow. This is unbelievable. What a, what an incredible innovation here. So then to be like, all right, well, you know, we did this for three years at the same stadium and now we're just going to go to Bowman gray. I mean, that's a nice little thing for like the traditionalist fans, but the whole point of the clash I thought was let's get people hyped up for the season and an attention grabbing thing like, Oh wow. Like Bowman gray 
or sorry, the LA Coliseum or in, inside a stadium, like that's, that gets people, my, it gets my friends talking who are sports fans, right? Mm-hmm. Not just the NASCAR fans. So if it is going to be preseason, and I, I say if, because is that what they're going to do? Like, I mean, I looked up, so this would be on February 2nd mm-hmm. if, if it follows the same thing, right? Two weeks before Daytona 500, one week before the Super Bowl. So the average high temperature in Winston-Salem is 47 degrees. So that's the average. And then is this going to be a possible night race? I mean, so are we, is that what we're talking about here? We're talking about a, a purposefully scheduled cold weather race where if you even get to 50, that's like a plus and people are going to be freezing. Is, 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 are, is that correct? Am I, yeah, am I, I mean, right? I got to be real careful here. Um, I have okay. I've heard talks that maybe it could be at a different time of the year. I don't feel confident reporting that. I don't feel confident. I mean, from one of my conversations I've had with folks, everything indicates to me that it was going to be preseason. Um, and so, okay, well then that's, that's, so here's the thing. So that's that, fine. That's fine. But if you're going to do that, and this, this gets away from your schedule thing for just a second, but if you're going to say we're, we're willing to race in cold weather, which is essentially what this is, right? Because it could be, if the average high is 47, it could very well be 40 degree day something right or whatever so if you're saying that that is what we're willing to do then why can you not we just said last week i was wrong well you know what uh, we kansas could host the finale that's is, that's where i'm going with this we, we just said oh kansas could never we do it in november i mean so and and here's another one and i and and brett griffin you know he did a poll this week on his twitter um where he was like you know where where could host the you know, the championship and, and another one was Darlington. That would be even warmer weather than Kansas. So why, why are we stuck in this mentality of, well, it's gotta be at, at Phoenix or it's gotta be at Homestead or whatever. It's gotta be somewhere warm. If NASCAR is willing to say, no, nah, we, we can do cold. Okay. Well then take the championship to Kansas or Darlington, oh, hang, in hang, my hang, opinion. Hang. I, what? I will concede Kansas. I will give you absolutely every Kansas checks just about every box except for the weather, but you can deal with that. Darlington presents a problem, though, and let me throw this in. Because it's the this, Labor Day race? The, so you're going to take it off of South, you're going to have, what are you going to do then? You're going to take it off of Southern, you're going to take the Southern 500 off of Labor Day weekend? I, I, you can't. You cannot do that. I don't, I don't know that you do. I think you could, I mean, yes, it's two a very, very short. you playoffs then? It, I don't know. I mean, you, you begin and you begin the playoffs and end the playoffs at Darlington just, just for one year? Yes, that'd be crazy. Weird. That'd be so freaking cool. I mean, as much as everybody's like, good. Darlington is like the ultimate driver's track. It is the ultimate test of skill in some ways. It is so freaking hard. And if you really want a great challenge, start the playoffs of the Southern 500, end it with the championship race at Darlington. I mean, again, you're not making it the permanent thing. You're, so, you're selling me. You're selling me. Keep going. Keep going. There's been there's been Pocono races, New Hampshire races. Michigan races that have all been closer together sure. timeline wise. Six weeks, than, some of the cases. Right, exactly. I mean, this would be like what, 10 weeks apart or whatever, nine weeks apart. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just saying. I mean you, you're you're selling me. You are you you're selling me. I'm not I'm not opposed to this. I mean, just imagine a one year if thing. they did come out, just they're like, all right, all right, 2020 whatever championship, Darlington Raceway. People would be like, oh, oh my god. Gosh, that would be so like right. I mean, I don't know. That so we could hit theoretically. I mean, we could have a rotation of races: Kansas, Darlington, Phoenix, Homestead. Um, and why you got to put Phoenix in there, bro? You can, you can have a you can Phoenix could host it every Aren't four we years. Done, haven't we? Haven't we have this enough? No, they put we too much money in Phoenix. There. You can say what you want about the quality of racing there, and I want to let's actually just have this conversation. We can say what you want about the quality of racing at Phoenix, but the fan support there has been legit. Legit. It has been a legit sellout. The fans turn out for that race. They've done a really good job. And I know Homestead is lauded for being a, quote, driver's racetrack and et cetera, et cetera. You look at the number of great races that have been in Homestead, it's not a high number, my friend. Yeah, but it's it's an actual test of driving skill. You can have so like, 
where like drivers can put it in their hands and make moves and run up against the wall. That's and fine. I get that. But it's there's not, not it's not all the talk about dirty air and arrow push and all You can this have of. a championship at Phoenix once every four or five years. It's okay. And honestly, if you want to put corporate politics aside, you throw Phoenix you throw Las Vegas in that mix. So you, you've got five tracks right there. Theoretically, if Fontana ever gets scored away, you've got six. So you, you know, every six years it could go back to Phoenix. Well, the bad news is further down your article, yes. you say this is the next on the list. We're no I'm very yeah. So Phoenix, is, this is I can confirm this. Um, Phoenix is hosting the 2025 NASCAR Championship Weekend. That is done. I, I mean, what, what, you look like a kid who got socks on Christmas morning. I mean, what, what's I, I? I don't even know what to say. I mean, I thought it was pretty well established, even like a couple years ago. They're like, all right, this is. This is not very good. This is not very good. Like, let's let's see them go somewhere else. And everybody's like, yeah, they sh- they'll go somewhere else. And then it's like, no, this year it came back again. And then after, like, um, the March race or whatever that when that was, March, February, March, mm-hmm. I guess, it was like, all right, well, that was, this is, uh, this, uh, this will definitely be the last year of this Phoenix experiment because this is just not, I mean, hey, you know, you got you had a guy come back, came through the field, great, but like this this will be the last time. And then now here we are again. We have another Phoenix Championship race this year, and you're telling me you're sitting here telling me that next year's Phoenix next year's championship race is going to be at Phoenix again. Yeah, it'll be announced this week. I mean, you got I, socks I, on Christmas morning, my friend. I just don't even know what to say about it. I mean, I just don't even I. Who is who is asking for this? Who wants this? And again, I'm I don't disagree with you, but fund I'm just going to play devil's advocate. And the devil's advocate is there is a lot of support from the city there. They've poured a lot of money into that track, and the fans have turned out for that race. It has sold out weeks in advance. Homestead wasn't a sell. It's not even that big of a track. But the fan support is much more there than it is in Homestead. So, so you're 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 dictating your championship race by, okay, this track sold forty thousand tickets versus a track that sold. I mean, we're talking about like ten thousand tickets or something. I'm dictating on the that, fact that, that I just poured a bunch of money, in millions of dollars. Haven't they gotten that back already? Uh, I, I mean, don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. I'm also dictating the fact that the city freaking embraces it, and I love I love Homestead. I, I with you on Homestead. I get it. But when you step off the plane in Miami. Do you know that the NASCAR championship is there? No. I don't care. People I don't do care. though. Who? Well, Who cares? You want to be in a city. We that- don't we didn't get it. We didn't get enough. We didn't get enough advertising in the airport or enough billboards. So this this is how we this is how the, the championship race determined. What about hey, hey, guess what? We made a format that is all about one race. One race is our entire championship. So we better get a track for that one race that is actually has good racing, right? This is not like, oh, this is the finale of, of the chase, the 10 races. I could actually buy your argument if you were like, all right, this is the finale of the 10 races because then there's nine other races and blah, 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 right? If this is the format, and it's all about one race, mm-hmm. the final four, to keep going back to Phoenix, which the race just, it's just not great. When you have other great tracks, you telling me that, hey, the airport had great advertisement at baggage claim, but- or the track sells out, it's 40,000 seats or whatever it is. I don't care. I'm sorry. Like, I don't think that's enough of a justification. It's not. It should be about the racing, the racing product that the millions of people watching on TV that you're hoping to get with this format that you created so you could get better ratings against the NFL in the fall. It should be about the product. So I don't care about the baggage claim. I'm sorry. If the idea, I don't even check bags. I know you check bags full of shoes. I don't even go to the baggage claim. So, well, maybe if you went to okay. baggage claim, you would see the really cool signs they have in your opinion. Would I've seen it. I've seen it. Cause you come down the escalator and you're like, Oh, they have tire tracks on the floor of the Phoenix airport. See. That's a cool little touch. NASCAR must be in town. 
Okay. But if the idea is big picture is to turn the championship weekend into NASCAR's version of Super Bowl where it's rotated. And the idea is, is for cities to bid on it. Like Phoenix is doing that right. They are putting money and energy and time into doing this where Homestead and Miami aren't. Now, part of what the article on The Athletic is, the Homestead City Council had a meeting last month and they are basically saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, but they, they are going to kind of try to do what Phoenix is doing and put together a monetary push to bring NASCAR back to Homestead Miami Speedway in 2026. Now, we don't know if that's going to be successful or not, but if NASCAR's goal is to turn this into their version of the Super Bowl where people are interested in this and you're going to push city folks to, if you want this, come, you know, here, you know, this this can be yours. This is what you do. What's the what's the next TV contract? How much money are they getting? Uh, 40% more than they were. No, 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 no. I'm saying, like, how much do you remember how much they're getting total or how much per I year? To look. It's it's in the billions, right? Yeah. Isn't it over a billion a year? Yeah, they got a 40% increase too. Yeah. Okay. So you're telling me that because Homestead Miami Homestead, Florida, City Council had a meeting and they're like, you know what? Hey guys, um 7. let's try to throw seven billion dollars, by the way. How much? Seven point seven billion dollars. For a seven year deal. So they're getting one point one billion dollars a year. So because Homestead is going to be like, hey, like you think you guys think we could scrape up a couple hundred grand of incentives or tax breaks or something to get NASCAR to come here. Um, and NASCAR's like, well, I mean, we have like 1.1 billion a year, but boy, that that's you know what? Back to Homestead, everybody. Everybody book it. We're going back. That's what it took. That's what it took to get back at Homestead. Phoenix, you're out. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Is that what we're talking about here? That's crazy. I'm sorry. It's crazy. That's what you're telling me. I can't. <laughs> is, there, is there something I'm missing? <laughs> this is. It's over. Stop it. Stop it. We have a new number one. <laughs> All high rant. I mean, I don't understand what we're talking about here. I'm sorry, my face is so red now. <laughs> this is it. It's all I don't understand. You know, the I'm... only thing that would be better about this is if you rapped about it. All right. Anyway, let's keep moving on. All right. <laughs> sorry. I just don't get I all right. I'm sorry. No. This was very disappointing uh, to read I, okay. your article. You're as a great article. As you are. Support our work on the app. No, no, hang on, we're not done yet. Oh, what? As okay. angry as you are about Phoenix. I have some good news for you. 2025 okay. regular season finale will be at Daytona again. Okay. I mean, that's lovely. I mean, but that's, we. I mean, didn't we think that was going to happen once the Olympic thing was yeah, over but anyway? I'm just telling you it's confirmed. You know. Oh my God. I have tears in my eyes. Still. I can't okay. breathe. It's great. <laughs> so I just got a live text from Bob oh, right oh. now as the show's going on. He says, we can hear Bianchi laughing. You are you are disrupting the entire media center deadline room with your laughter. It's your fault. So Don't blame me. Back it down, buddy. You are back such a good ranter. You made me laugh. I'm sorry. I didn't think. I honestly didn't. I was just going to be like, look, I'm just kind of speechless. I don't know what to say. Who wants this? And then I got just got on a roll out of nowhere. I'm, mm. I'm sorry. All right. Two more quick things. Uh, there, there is more <sighs> in this article. Go check it out in The Athletic. I encourage you. But two more quick things. No race on Easter Sunday next year. And, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, all-star race is going back to North Wilkesboro. Okay. I mean, that's fine. I mean, I, I'm well, I, I, obviously I was against the Easter thing. And I thought, I actually thought I was in the minority on that. Uh, based on the clip that Dirty Mo posted, and people are still, yeah. out of all the clips <laughs> that Dirty Mo's posted, people still keep replying to that, and it keeps popping up in my Instagram feed of all somebody right. going, like somebody last week, I wish I could pull it up really quick, but I, I don't want to stall up the show, but somebody was like, so we were like split screen, right? And they're like, whoever that guy on the top screen is, what are, just just don't watch on Easter if you don't want to race on Easter, blah, blah, blah. Like people are just still so mad about whoever the idiot was on the top. And so then I like to reply and be like, yeah, that guy should definitely shut up. I don't know who that guy is either, but you know, I've, I've had some fun in the comments oh. anyway. All right. Um, 
well, like I said, if you could go to theathletic.com slash NASCAR, uh, you will see more stories like Jordan's coming out. Um, one thing that we also covered this week, we had um, Michael McDowell going to Spire Motorsports. Um, what what exactly did you make of that that whole thing? Comes out the job security, right? And you know he didn't feel he got an, a multi year contract from Spire Motorsports, and essentially at front row. He's been on a year-to-year deal. Now, Michael is under a multi-year contract right now at Front Row, but they have an option on him. Going, they had an option on him for 2024. So effectively, he's on a one-year deal. He doesn't really can know, you know year-to-year where he's going to race. He got a multi-year guaranteed offer from Spire Motorsports, and he wanted that security. He wanted to, to be somewhere where he knew that he was wanted, and he took it. And I think from Spire's perspective, it's a home run hire. Michael McDowell is a quote unquote, a locker room guy. He is going to make your team better. Like he is really, really good at building teams up. He deserves a lot of credit for what front row has accomplished over the last few years and how they've progressively gotten better. I'm not even just counting Daytona, but just look at what, look at his win at Indy. Todd Gilliland is showing speed this year. Like there's a lot of great people in that organization, but Gilliland is kind of like the, the one is really honestly the galvanizing force. And, I think him going to Spire is huge because they're getting a, for the first time, they're going to have a driver in their fold who's a multi-time playoff driver and a multi-time race winner. That That is a big thing. I think it's a perfect fit. He's got good relationships with a lot of people over there. I, I think it's a home run hire for Spire as they continue to put these pieces of the puzzle together. I mean, I, I can't disagree with any of that. I think that's, that's well said. It still feels like Spire's you know, on the rise and, and certainly is going to be having resources to, uh, you know, to go forward and improve. Um, and yes, front row is, you know, they have that great deal with Ford now, but, um, you know, McDowell is, is a veteran guy and I think he can make a difference there and make Spire better, as you said. So, um, yeah, definitely, uh, definitely agree with everything you said. I do want to address also something that was a little disheartening for me this week before we vote in the, in the, was it a good race poll and close this thing out? Um, I was very surprised, um, and just sad, honestly, to see, uh, the news of, of FS1 and Fox sports canceling race hub. Um, I think the last episode will be June 11th. Um, and I think this caught everybody off guard, including the people that worked at the show. I don't really think that people, I mean, this was a show that had pretty good numbers, I believe, pretty good ratings. And honestly, was a very important, has been a very important show for NASCAR. Um, This is a kind of, you know, this is where, you know, they they did the all-star rules announcement every year. This is where paint schemes were unveiled. This is where a lot of, um, you know, some newsmakers would have their first talking points or their their first interviews um, after an incident or something, right? They'd go on race up and you hear from them first, you know, NASCAR to have a daily studio show dating back to, you know, obviously NASCAR America has gone now. NASCAR now from ESPN is gone. Um, totally NASCAR was around when I first got into racing and I loved that show watching that every day. Um, the Chris Devota, Steve Burns days and all that stuff. Um, and you know, I think major sports have, daily TV studio shows. So for NASCAR to lose the last one they had, and I don't know if there's any plans to replace it. I mean, NASCAR has that new content studio, but I don't know that's going to be on TV if they have some sort of a daily show or something like that. And I, I don't know any of their plans, but yeah, I was just caught off guard, surprised and just sort of like, man, um, it's just, it's such a bummer for all the people that have worked there um, and, and really, you know, tried hard. I mean, uh, trying to produce an hour long show five days a week about NASCAR is really hard, really hard. So, um, I'm, I'm just sad for everybody there. What was your take on all that? I mean, I agree with everything you say. I think it's really unfortunate. It's become an institution. Um, there's a lot of great people in front of the camera, behind the camera over there that are impacted and you never want to see that. Um, it sucks. It frankly sucks. And, um, it's, I think it's, Sad. I don't know if sad is the right word. It's unfortunate that NASCAR now is, at least as we know it, is not going to have a daily 
show because it wasn't too long ago both NBC and Fox had them and they were both great. Um, well, I loved what NBC did. I loved what Fox did. They kind of did it in different ways. Um, it really sucks. And, and now you're going to, you look at how TNT typically does their programming. They're not going to have a, probably a regular show because that's not what they do. Now they have a pre, they have pregame shows for their sports and they, you know, so you would, you would assume that they'd have one for NASCAR, but we don't know. And does a daily NASCAR show on Amazon make sense? Nah, I don't really answer that question. Um, I will say one thing you said, you, you didn't really see this coming. I, I get that. And it was a surprise certainly. Um, but we also have to note Fox has fewer cup races next year. Um, they're 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 done after the All Star race. Um, they're they're their first you know the Colt Six Hundred is going to Amazon. Um, so that that's something to note, and that's something to know about why this move's done. Also, in addition to that, they don't have Xfinity Series races anymore, so they have less inventory. And so, if you're wondering why some of these moves are being made, you've got less Cup races, you've got no Xfinity races. Um, you're also paying more money. Um, and so not, not justifying it by any means, because I, I, I wholeheartedly agree with everything you said. But if you're wondering why this is being done, I would start there. Well, let me throw this at you. So let's say Fox is, you know, look, OK, they don't have Xfinity, right? Like NASCAR wanted to sell that off in a different package with its own thing, um, which I think is great, by the way, to give it its own identity and all that I stuff. Think, yeah, I think that CW so, deal is actually really smart. <clears throat> Yeah. So obviously NASCAR as well wanted to do different packages where they could get more money by mm -hmm. selling different parts of the season off. So Fox gets four, I think it was four less races as a result from 16 down to yes. 12 yeah. next year, something like that. So what you're telling me here is that because Fox doesn't have Xfinity and they have just four less races that their year long show, at least until from November to February or from February to November every year, right. Or whatever it is, January to November that that show now will end this June because they basically got four less cup races. I mean, I just think it's something you have to keep in mind and as you're making this. Oh, I get that. And that's what I've heard from people, yeah. but like Fox is upset about this. So they're going to cut the show. Well, I, and I will I say too, like, they, you know, and I agree with you, like you want to have a daily studio show, but, they're, they're no longer the norm. Like Major League Baseball is a perfect example of this. You know, growing up, Baseball Tonight on ESPN was it. Seven days a week, I'd watch Baseball Tonight. And you had two editions. You had the early edition and the late edition. Um, and that was great. That's gone. You know, NBA has got a daily show. Um, and NFL has got a daily show on ESPN. But really, outside of that, like there's not NHL. To, NHL, NHL doesn't have a daily show on one of the you know big platforms. Now those MLB and NHL have their own networks, and so that you can go there. That's the difference. So, you know, it's unfortunate. I, I would hope with NASCAR and this production studio, and this is just me talking, is you would hope that maybe you do see more stuff on NASCAR.com. They certainly have the capability. They've got the talent there in front of the camera and behind the camera to do some really cool things, and we have seen that. Um, you know, Steve Letard and, and Todd Gordon do these really cool videos, uh, you know, kind of breaking down key moments races. So the, the I, I would hope that we see that maybe more online and there's a push because there's certainly an opportunity to do that. Well, it's time for the oh. Was It a Good Race poll. <laughs> um, I won last week with the good. number one all-time race in the good race poll, Kansas. Deserved it. You were... You were skeptical. You were Shouldn't. you thought you were going to get burned by going too high. Yeah. You gave me an easy layup I for did. that one. You're welcome. Um, and I have now taken the lead. Seven to six. Big Joe Wall, who tracks this for us, would like me to note that I have guessed within five percentage points six weeks in a row. Great. I mean, Wonderful. shout out to me, no? No, that's it. I mean, I've guessed within five percentage points, six weeks in a row. That's your man good. of the people. You know, what you've the also want. done that three of the last six, but only because you're copying my guess. Anyway, so here we are again. I now need to guess. Um, this is a tricky one because I don't think like stage two today, people were like, I'm this race. Pfft, I'm not loving this race. I don't think they were super into it. 
but obviously the ending, the battle for the lead, starting with Reddick Kozlowski, um, and then Busher getting in there, and then the incident at the end, a popular winner, um, Ford breaking through, Tarlington in general, blah, blah, blah. I think it's going to be pretty high, but I don't really know how high. So that's what I'm worried about here. And I'm worried about that you're going to go higher than me on whatever I do. So I'm going to try to drive it up just enough so you go over me and then it lands under under me. That's my strategy. Uh-huh. I'm revealing it right here. So I'm going to say 88.7. 88? Oh, uh-oh. You went 88? No? Oh, shoot. I'm sorry. What 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 do you think? Are you no, thinking no, it's way keep, lower? Keep finish your answer out. 88 what? 88 point what? Uh, 88.7. Wow, you seem really happy. Oh my gosh. Wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You you so think it's way high. lower. I, Your straw poll people DM'd you that it was lower? We're not talking about the straw poll anymore. Um Wow, 88. That seems really great finish, but like Oof. I'm gonna go 80. Wow. I'm gonna go 80. percent I think it'll actually be lower than that, but I'm gonna go 80. percent Whoa! You think it's gonna be in the 70s? I think it's gonna be in the high 70s. What? Yeah. Did we watch the same race? Oh man! Now you got me second guessing myself. Wow! So you're just going flat 80? Yeah, I'm gonna go flat 80. Oh, I should have gone low mid 80s. Dang it! I wow. hate this stupid poll. This thing is dumb. That's really interesting that you, uh, let me, let me tell you something, Jordan. Okay. There's been 13 Darlington races in the poll. Um, eight of them are above, are 83% or higher. Great. So you're telling me no, that no, I got this one. Surely. Right. I mean, I do know that I had people messaging me during the race and they were like, this is no, no. You shouldn't listen to people. Just judge off your own opinion. That you should stop reading your mentions too, okay? Let's see what happens first. I didn't, I'm, this is my own opinion. I did not, this is my own opinion. So I'm, I'm, it's been been working for me. I I thought this was classic Darlington in every sense. I loved it, but I'm just Not to to make you paranoid, but I did have some people at the tweet up last week that said they were going to start DMing you false information about what they really thought of the race. I actually so, stopped looking at if, my DMs because since I said we talked about my DMs, the, the, the things that have been sliding into my DMs are not the things I want sliding into my DMs. Wow. Yeah. The okay. Last week's been a little eye-opening, shall we say. You know, those are those are spam bots. These were not spam bots. Were actually spam now. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah. Well, that seems like a good place to leave this. And, uh, you know, I've got to do some editing of this because you dropped a swear word that I now have to figure out how to bleep. Well, you wanted to so, role play. And if we're going to, like, I'm sorry. We just said no swearing. Well, I didn't think and... you were going to drop an F-bomb. I don't think what I said was that bad. Okay. Anyway. Well, I got to do that. So we'll just call it call it a week now. <laughs> so uh, next week, you are at the NASCAR All-Star Race North Wilkesboro. Yep. Um, and I will be at indianapolis motor speedway i don't know if they'll let me stay there that late but we'll try to do a post-race podcast after the all-star race and also talk about indy 500 qualifying let you know all the things that happen with uh kyle larson there hopefully he'll make the race (laughs) that'd be bad um anyway uh anything else that you want to touch on okay number one rant of uh jeff gluck all time all time? That is short cl- I think this is number one all time. Number one rant. The Homestead City Council thing? Yes. Yeah, this is so good. That that was what got it's, you? It's so, dude, I, stopped, <laughs> I couldn't breathe. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I just, I feel like there's something. I, somebody's going to message me and be like, no, you don't understand what they're really saying is this. And they're going to give this much money. I'm going to be like, oh, okay. I guess well, that I makes mean, more sense. It's probably sense. more than you think, but yeah. Yeah. But. I don't know. The point stands. The point stands. All right, everybody. Thanks as always for listening. And we will talk to you next time on the teardown. See everybody.